friends, welcome back to Jason Unleashed for part two of my interview with the incomparable legendary voice, the former member of In Vogue, Dawn Robinson. She's gonna be back in the chat. Had an incredible first part of the interview. Wow, simply wow. I mean, talking to this legend about her story and um, her life in music has just been incredible. Let's go live with Dawn and welcome back everybody. Boom, boom, Dawn, Dawn, Dawn. My internet, internet, do not fail me. Do not fail me. All right, Dawn, we're back. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Hi, love. Yes. So you were saying um, that Don't Let Go Love, huge song. You ended up singing the vocals mm -hmm. and it became. Jason, yeah. just one second. Hold that thought. Someone told me on the break that we have a lot of trolls in here. And I told them if they come on with this messy, catty bullshit talking about stuff that they don't know anything about. If they have truth and they know the truth, then come on and tell that. I've challenged them over, I've, I've done over 60 interviews. I'll just round it off to say 60 interviews. And every single time I'm like, if you guys have anything that I don't have or I'm not telling the truth about it, come on and tell them. Right. Feel free to do that. So if you're gonna come on with a fake page and that's what they do, these fake pages and, and, not, uh, and then they, they're trying to disrupt. Yes. And I don't right. appreciate that at all. And so I'm sorry I just that, want you to know. A hundred percent, and I can't block them in the in the live because I know, but the fans take... are handling it. Trust that the, right. the fans are handling them. It's like they want to be messy. It's like no, you guys know the truth. It's probably, and I say this with all truthfulness. Denny, Tommy, or Sylvia herself, or Terry, or Cindy, or one of them that don't want the truth out. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys have had all these years without. I've just done these last what. Um, three months that I've been doing these interviews and telling my truth. You guys have had years. So if you had right. anything else to say, you should have said that. I'm out telling the truth and putting my book out as well. So that's why they don't like what I'm saying. But We're go gonna ahead. talk about that book, but okay. So well then no, let's, you, you, let's talk about this though, Don, because you yeah. said you've had, you, you've, you've had years. As I said earlier, social media lends itself to people to do what we're doing now, to finally yes. be able to say their truth and get, so, yes. and get it off their chest. After you left in Vogue, after you, after you wanted to go solo, and then after, and, and how you had to deal with just years and years of people saying that you're the bad girl, mm -hmm. you're the bad guy, you are the problem. I'm seeing the problem. Them on, seeing them go on to release EB3 and then 2002 Masterpiece Theater. Also seeing them have new members in Amanda Cole and Ronna Bennett. How did that affect you? And how did you heal from that? Because people talk about the business of music, but they don't talk about the business of healing after Ooh, what you wow. have been through is a trauma. You have been traumatized. It, it was hard. It was hurtful. I mean, you're talking about a group that I helped create. And, and this was the thing. The caveat was, like I said, they asked me to do a solo album. I started the process three songs in. They tell me we're going to pull your album. Um, but because I outsmarted Sylvia, she decided to let me go. Mm -hmm. She wants me out of the group now. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I recorded the whole EV, what became EV3, which is why they had to pull my vocals off. If I wasn't there to record the album, then they wouldn't have had to pull my vocals off. Hello, I was there. <laughs> I recorded the whole thing and I keep getting blamed. It's like, I don't know the trickery of, of, of people's words that they can twist stuff and make it seem like a certain way when it actually, it's like, you guys, uh, you can hear me on uh, Too Gone Too Long. You can hear yes, me on can. Whatever mm -hmm. uh, by Babyface. You can hear me on, um, what is the other one? Too Gone Too Long, Right Direction, um, Hip Hop Lover, I think was on that album. Hip Hop, Don't uh, Stop. I think I'm on there too. There's a bunch of, I'm on the whole thing. There, I think they did two songs um, when they kicked me out of the group that they recorded without me. Otherwise, I'm on the whole album, so I don't understand. And that, so we come to the end of the album is almost finished. Sylvia Rohn flies into LA. She goes to Terry's hotel. We all meet in ho Terry's hotel room. And when I get there, I'm always late. Jason, I'm chronically late. I know that I'm going to be late <laughs> for my funeral. I know it. You guys, I had to look fabulous. Okay, so my hair, I had to get my hair done. Like, I'm here, though. I'm here. So I was late, and when I get in, I had to literally walk in the door and sit right down where, where I, because there was no room to stand, there was no room to sit anywhere else. Um, and it's almost like to strategically put a chair right in the doorway where I had to sit, like right there, because they wanted to single me out. Now I see that in hindsight. But Maxine was sitting to my right, she was on the floor, 
Cindy was, uh, Terry was sitting on the end of the couch, but instead of sitting facing me, like I'm facing you right now, Terry sat on the couch this way. So she was facing whoever was sitting on the couch. I don't know if you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so she was sitting on the arm of the chair, but she was facing that way, looking that direction. Cindy was sitting next to her. She was facing me and Maxine. Sylvia Rowe was sitting next to Cindy. She was facing us as well. One of our managers was sitting on the couch. This couch was huge on the couch as well. And she was facing us as well. Her name was Carol. She's passed away since then. And then uh, Alan Kovac, which was our other manager, was sitting on a chair next to the couch. And then I'm like, what the hell? This is supposed to be a creative meeting, but our, our attorneys are here? Like, oh, and that's when I knew something's up. Something's up, because I wasn't told that they were going to be here. So, uh, and then Marilyn Bob, I think, was there as well, because he was Sylvia Rohn's A&R guy, her right-hand guy. So all these yeah, people Marilyn are in the room, yeah. and I'm like, you know, Marilyn Bob, wow, you know a lot of people, Jason. So uh, I'm like, okay, this is weird with them here. Um, but okay. So at the time, I had one of those pages that you can text to talk. Mm -hmm. And I was texting my boyfriend and my manager saying something's up. So um, Sylvia says to me, um, yeah, so Dawn, I was telling the girls before you walked in the room that uh, we can't have any hidden agendas on this project. You know, this is everybody has to be in one accord. Everybody has to be focused on this album, which would EV4, I'll just call it that. We didn't have a name yet, but EV4 album, and we can't have any hidden agendas. And I said, okay. And she said, um, so you have a solo album? I said, yeah. I haven't started my solo album yet, but okay. And she said, well, you have a solo project. I said, okay. And we, she said, and we can't have any hidden agendas. I said, I don't have a hidden agenda. So what are you talking about? She said, but you have a solo. We kept going back and forth. I was like, Sylvia, I have a solo deal on the table, but I have not started singing one note. I've been in the studio every single day within Vogue recording this EB4 album or whatever it's going to be called. So I don't have a hidden agenda. Um, and she's like, uh, she said something else. I said, wait a minute. So why is it okay for Terry? Like I said, Terry was sitting on the end of the couch, but she was facing her, facing Sylvia, facing Cindy. Why is it okay for Terry to do a solo album? Terry did a solo album too. Why is it okay that she did that? And I did a right. solo album, but I didn't even finish my solo album. I had it's a problem. Yeah. So once Sylvia let me go, I had a deal on the table with Dr. Dre. And after but that. I hadn't started. Dr. Dre knew that my priority was En Vogue first. I had an obligation to that album with En Vogue. So he knew we couldn't start anything. I'm not going to get in the studio with you, Dr. Dre. He's like, well, that's fine, because I got all these projects that I'm doing anyway. So we never started my album with Dr. Dre. So I said, what is different about Terry doing a solo album and me? What's different about that? And Terry turned to me and said, it just, it's just different, Dawn. It just is. It's just different. And I mm -hmm. looked at her like, OK, so whose mother are you? Like, when did you come, become? In other words, it's like your mom's saying, you asked her to go outside and play with your friends, and she says no. And right. you say, why? And she said, because I just said so. Because it just I, just, I said so. You don't question that. And I was like, no, this is not because it's just different. It's not just different. And then Sylvia said something and jumped in. But my thing is, Jason, Cindy was sitting right there. Maxine was sitting to my right. And instead of them saying, wait a minute, Dawn's right about that. It's not different. Terry did a solo album. We supported her. We didn't kick her out of the group. De Terry, Dawn started her solo album, but we're kicking Dawn out of the group. Mm -hmm. Dawn didn't even finish the album. She didn't do any of that. But we're kicking her out, and we're not kicking Terry out. Like, right. why is this different? Why like you were like you were the you were the traitorous one. But it's like and but exactly so, right. Wow. But, wow. but this is the thing, and I wasn't even a traitor, and neither was Terry. There was a solo right within our contract for all of us to do a solo album if we wanted to. Yeah. My thing is, if Sylvia Rome would have taken care of us financially and Denny and Tommy made sure that we made more than two pennies a record, neither one of us would have would have looked to do a solo album at all. We wouldn't have right. because they would have renegotiated our contract the way we deserve to. Right. I didn't I thought I thought it was too early for Terry to do a solo album. I thought it was too early for me to do a solo album. So but I'm not gonna lose my house in the interim either. So if you're offering me a solo deal, I'm gonna take it. Any any Anyone in their right mind, Don, that just speaks to your business acumen. And also, yeah. as people of color, how we have to stay resilient in spite of. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? like, it, exactly, it, it, Jason. It, 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 you're, you're right. Like, any, anyone would have said, yeah, one, you love to sing. You were born to sing. Exactly. Two, we all were. <laughs> two, 
you it's hey it's another extension of you creatively and three i gotta eat thank you i gotta pay these bills i'm not sitting around and waiting because the whole time terry was on the road and doing her thing it was like we were sitting around I, this is what i wish would have happened in hindsight that cindy and maxine were not so afraid that we could have gone to the label and said look you guys put terry in the studio you have her in there doing her album when she started when she was recording we want out of the deal. We want yeah. out of the deal because you've breached your contract with us. Yes, there's a solo right within the contract for Envogue to do that, but right now is not the time for Terry to do a solo album. So we want to be free. Me, right. Cindy, and Maxine, we want, we, the three of us want to be free, and we're going to go out and find another girl to, to because Terry already told us, I, I don't want to make decisions with you guys. You guys go ahead and do what you need to do. I, I don't agree with what you want to do. In other words, I don't want to go against Denny because that's my man and that's my loyalty. So I, you guys go ahead and you make decisions without me. That's what she told us. Wow. Terry, we can't make decisions without you. We need four of us because we signed as a four girl group, not just three girls. So if we go to Sylvia and say, hey, we want this and we want that, she's going to be like, um, where's Terry? Mm -hmm. No. But she had Terry in the studio on her own. So that's what I'm saying. We had the right to say, <clears throat> we want to be free from this. Because you're not giving a fuck about the three of us. You put Terry in the studio. You gave her money for that solo album, first of all. Yeah. She only gave me what they call a recording budget. So she gave me, I think, six grand, something mm -hmm. like that. You know, enough to do the couple of songs that I did, the three songs that I did. Um, so I didn't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? So. Right. Here I am. It's like, okay, if you want us, if you want us to come back together to reneg renegotiate our contract and give us what we deserve, now we're talking. Now we can do that. Right. But with Terry outside of the group, we can't do that without her. So Cindy was afraid. She didn't want to do it. I don't know. We're going to get sued. We're going to, and I had attorneys come in and try to talk to us about what it is that our rights were, what we deserve, what we should have. We had an attorney named Stephen Barnes who was, you're talking about brilliant. Brilliant. He understood the law. You know Stephen Barnes too? You probably no, but, but my, my husband's an attorney and I understand brilliant attorneys that oh get my the God. law. Exactly. A black man too? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So Stephen, to, to have, we had a black attorney. Our first attorney, Don Wilson, was, he was genius too. But I think a lot of times the big attorneys are bought by the record labels. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they are... And you got to be careful with management, too, because managers are, they work for the labels. Well, in other about, words. Yeah, like, no, case in point, Kesha, and, and you, you're being, the, the labels have producers and managers that they're in bed with to make sure that the money stays in house. And it makes yes. sense. It's relationships yes. for everything. Choreographers yes. do that at agencies. It's, it's about, because the bottom line is coins and dollars. So if we align ourselves with people who, in all facets of the business, Yes. And we have a relationship with them before we bring in the talent, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, cool. Our bases are covered in the books because the money's going to keep coming back internally. It's, all, it's, it's, it's this cannibalistic, weird, incestuous thing. It's stupid. It makes no sense. Exactly. I like you, how you said that. Cannibalistic. It is. Incestual. Yeah, it is. It's insane. Because to me, and I told Sylvia that she called my house because she was pissed off. So she called my house and I said, okay, so what's up, Sylvia? And she said, do you know who I am? I am Sylvia Rowe. Now, you know, she's very New York. She's a very, I'm good with accents. So I'm like, first of all, um, because she thought that during the uh, photo shoot for Don't Let Go, that I, she, I, she was told that I was in the room talking about her. Well, I'm, I'm sure many people were talking about Sylvia Rowe, though. That's what I told her. That's exactly what I said. I said, um... Sylvia, I said, first of all, don't you have like better things to do than call my house? Like, aren't you Sylvia Roan? You're upset that I was talking. I said, first of all, it was Cindy. It was Maxine. It was Dawn. It was, uh, I think our choreographer was in the room with us too. And the photographer, Frank we were was all your, laughing. Was your, choreo was your choreographer Frank Gadsden? Frank Gadsden, yes. Very messy. Very, very messy. But he was talking shit too. I said, and by the way, the representative for the art department at your label, Atlantic Records, um, Lynn, I want to say her name was Lynn or Liz, was also talking shit about you. Right now, we're on the phone together, Sylvia. Don't you know that there's people that are talking shit about you? Like, you're upset with me. And I was not the only one. So if you're going to call me, you need to call every single person that I just named that was in that room that day. What does it matter? 
Yeah. You know, so she's always she always has always had this whole love hate thing for me because I guess I I I speak my mind a little bit too much for people. I am the troublemaker. I am the No, you're you're just you the are bitch. I wouldn't say I I wouldn't say I mean if to give to put a label on it fine, but I think that it's just again back to what I said earlier, it's about you followed your gut and you you knew you you you're just you're very innately connected to what's right and what's wrong how yes. did everything that happened though don you did ask your... me that i'm sorry jason you asked me how it felt is that what you're gonna no, ask yeah, me again yeah, yeah no, it's, no, I'm, I'm, no I'm sure no i'm gonna ask you because i never but I answered to... <laughs> but no you did you did you did in a roundabout way because you clearly it impacted you yeah uh, you married in different ways how did the relationship with the girls uh change obviously after you left what was the estrangement what what was like the new normal for your relationship with them going remember, forward after that i remember telling them in the room while we were still sitting there in terry's hotel room i said to cindy and because she was sitting straight across from me like i said and i said to maxine i said cindy and maxine i said you guys may be on the hot seat one day you may be sitting exactly where i'm sitting right now so you need to think about how you guys are treating me and Cindy yeah. said, yeah, I need to think about that. Yeah, you need to. And what happened, Maxine, two years later, they kicked her ass out. We could have stood together. I don't understand why they stood behind Terry, who was only standing behind her man. She, did, she gave not one fuck, not one, as I say, don't give, give your fucks away. She gave all of her fucks to her manager. Her, I'm sorry, her, to her producer. She didn't care about us. And I was like, why would you... It's almost like you're cutting your nose to spite your face. You care about your man, but you don't care about your business. And as a businesswoman, I, re I resent her for that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was like mm -hmm. everything fell apart. Now, over the years, Maxine would reach out to me, or I saw Cindy at a party one time um, when she first had her first baby. Mm -hmm. um, it was Frank Gadsden's house, and he invited her and invited me without telling us that either one was going to be there. It was messy. Yeah. But um, it was also great because I missed her. It was two years after the group and I hadn't seen them in two years. So here I, I walked in and I was like, <gasps> and I, there were well, people behind yeah. me. So I couldn't like she didn't see me yet. So but I couldn't back out of the room because Cindy uh -huh. was like, you know what I mean? She had seen me and I was like, oh, my God. So I walked over to her and I had, hey, Cindy, it's Dawn. Hey. And she had a new baby and she was in the living room uh, breastfeeding her baby by herself with her husband. And I was like, it was small talk. It was nervous, small talk. How are you? How's everything? Oh my God, your baby. How many kids do you have now? This is my second one. Oh my God. Okay, wow. I love you. Gotta go. Good to see you. And then I walked in through the kitchen and out to the pool where everybody was. And I was like, oh my God. I was just, I was so nervous. And you could tell she was too. And she had her husband come and ask my boyfriend if we could go to lunch. Oh, cool. And yeah, so about a week later, um, I went and my mom said, when you're at lunch with her, just ask her why. Why they kicked you out of the group. Why they didn't have your back. And I said that, um, I said, hey, Cindy, it's good to see you. She's like, I know, it was good to see you. She said, I had to make amends with you because every single day I go in my bathroom. Like I said, she had a mini mansion. So she goes in her bathroom. I guess the bathroom, the way she described it was her bathroom was on this side and her husband was you could split their bathroom split and her husband was on one side and her bathroom was on the left and she said every day I'm brushing my teeth and I'm looking at these bottles she said and she started unwrapping them and she said do you remember these and she had them in tissue paper and they were little crystal bottles and she sat them both on the table and she said you gave me this one for Christmas and this one for my birthday when we first first met like we were recording the first album and I was like I don't remember but they're so pretty and she said yeah she said, every day I go in my bathroom and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about you because I'm brushing my teeth and I'm seeing, I'm like, I got to call Dawn. I wonder how she's doing. I miss her. I miss Dawn. I was like, well, I missed you guys too. She, I said, but I, I, my mom asked me to ask you this. I just want to know why. Yeah. You know, why you didn't have my back? Why you guys pushed me out? And she said, Dawn, we knew that you were right. Someone just sent me a clip of us on a show called Private sessions. It's yes. on. It's on a, YouTube. It was on, it was on A and E. I remember that. A and E, exactly, from Jason. Two, from two thousand nine. Yeah. Exactly. And I said it on the show, and Cindy backed me up and was like, "Yeah, we should have waited. We should have done this. We shouldn't have kicked on out. Like, we should have kind of talked and powwowed together." 
and I wish, and she said it on this other show too, and I don't know what the show is, but I have the clip. And I've been so busy that I haven't posted it, but she said it on there too. We should have listened, had together. We had, should have had togetherness. We should have stuck together. Yeah. Record company over there, production company over there, but us together as a group, we should have stayed together. Um, and she said, Dawn, we knew you were right. Um, we were too afraid to battle the record company. And yeah. everybody feels that way about a corporation. Right. Everybody feels that way, like, oh, we can't this fight them. Because they're so big. Because they're so they're so big. Big, right? And you feel like exactly. And, and and what corporations do, Don, is they make you feel like you're just a number. The culture, exactly. the culture fosters that less than an undervaluing of your presence within the collective. So that's why people feel like I I, I can't go against this, but exactly. team is a juggernaut. That is Warner Brothers, which is Electro Atlantic, and and yes, and, we so, have. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Wea absolutely. family. Yeah, Warner Brothers, Elektra, and Atlantic. Yeah, the yeah. Wea family. And it is huge. It is huge. But what That's I told huge. her, I'm right. so sorry, but what I told her was, I said, but Cindy, we were the ones with the power. Right. Sylvia told us that she needed that, that album, so she was going to pull my album. She was going to tell Terry to get off the road, and she needs us to go in there and record because she needed that money. We had the revenue that she needed. Mm -hmm. So had we stuck together... We, we, Terry wouldn't have needed to do a solo album. I wouldn't have needed a solo album because right. I wouldn't have needed the money. We would have had right. the money. So right. how many albums do you want us to do before we start re renegotiating a co our contract? Because we did four albums. Yeah. Born to Sing, Funky Divas, Runaway Love, and then here we are in the fourth album. How many albums, bitch, do you want us to do before we start getting paid? Yeah. You're sitting high on the horse. You got, I remember they had a, uh, on the cover of uh, Metropolitan Magazine, or not the cover, but she did a full spread of Met Metropolitan Magazine, Sylvia Rohn, you know, her elatial um, condo, you know, or, or whatever that she had, this, this beautiful um, flat that she had in New York, you know, and Denny and Tommy, like I said, Denny had his, when we walked into his, um, uh, his mansion and he tells us, because I said, my mouth is too big, Jason. It really is. And I said, oh, this is what our money bought you. This is, you know, this is what we got you. And he was like, no, because he said $20 million mansion. You That's you kidding me? Oh, oh, come on. So now you're flaunting the fact that you got 11 bedrooms and nine bathrooms or some shit. And I said that. And he was like, no, 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 no. Really, it was like it was an. I got it for a foreclosure. It was only eight mil million. It doesn't matter. It's it's a. No! It's, uh, but only eight million. I don't even have eight hundred thousand, let alone right. or eighty thousand to buy my mom a home, let alone eight million dollars. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Somebody help me. Let let's let's move into um the what you did after Invoke because one thing we know about you is that you're a survivor and thank you. The Lucy Pearl of it all. Here you yeah. are now, and that was such a moment in music. 2000, from 1990, I'd say to 2003, music was so incredible. Here you are with, with this, this gumbo of musical geniuses, right? Oh you have Ali God. Shaheed Muhammad from, from the Tribe Called Quest, yes. Raphael Sadiq, and then you, you guys release Lucy Pearl, Dance Tonight, great album, Don't Mess With My Man, oh. great record. Every day, great record from start to finish. This is an incredible album. Thank you. How yes. did, of course. How did Lucy Pearl come in and did Lucy Pearl restore did Lucy Pearl restore something in you that was stripped away from you from Invoke? It did. Well, first of all, I I found Raphael found me because he asked my manager at the time, Cassandra Mills, if I could do that project. Now, she had a bunch of solo projects on the deal for me. Uh, RCA was interested. They flew me out to New York. They flew her out as well. Um, so we had a great deal on the table. Uh, Virgin Records had offered. We went and met with them. I didn't like their deal as much. So I turned them down, but I had still had the deal on the table with uh, RCA, Bob Jameson. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when Raphael reached out to me, he was like, yeah, Don. Raphael, you know me since we were kids, and you're still calling me Don. You, it, literally, I, he was in my band when we were 16. Um, and he was calling me Don at that time. I'm like, dude, my name is Don. What do you call the sunrise? The Don. Okay, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then he was like, okay, Don, Don. So um, he said, yeah, I tried to ask your manager uh, if you could do this group idea that I have. And I was like, what do you mean? And she, she had called me as well to, uh, to tell me that he called her, but she told him no. Before I even got word that the deal was on the table. Like, are you kidding me, lady? Oh, 
we had differences the whole time that she was managing me because I'm strong minded. I'm strong willed. I'm a bull when it comes to what I feel. And she is the same way. Now she had run giant records. So she was running record companies. She was boss bitch. Mm. But uh, you're not going to tell me that this is not a great idea. It was a one off. First of all, one album, one album. It's not going to take too much time out of my life. We record the album, we go on the road, we do a couple of videos and we're done. The project's over. She told him no. And then she told me, yeah, Robbie will call me uh, a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago. And yeah, and he said that he has this idea that he wants you to do this group idea with him. And I told him no. Okay, you're fired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, right. I've seen, yeah, I've seen too many things with you and I that we have discrepancies with each other. This is not working for me. I am not a kid. I am not a new artist who just got into the business and I can't make up my own mind. I know you have deals on the table. I understand that. But I, but I think that if I call uh, Bob Jameson and tell him at RCA and tell him, hey, Bob, Raphael Sadiq has this great idea for a great album, he would think, oh, good. I fired her and I called him the next day and I said, well, first of all, I want to tell you, Cassandra Mills is no longer my manager. We had... A, difference of opinion um but if the deal happens i'll make sure that she gets paid you know because she brought the deal to the table you can't sure. just cut her out right um he said okay that's great and he and I said yeah and i have this other idea uh rafia sadiq from tony 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 wants me to do a group with him um tribe called quest ali Shah shaheed muhammad and then and Bo coming together making this like super said, group. gumbo yeah the super group and i think it's brilliant I've known Raphael since I was a kid. I feel comfortable with him. What do you think? What do you think? And he said, well, I really don't like super groups like that. Um, I don't think you should do it. That's not some." And I was like, wow, that's unfortunate. And I'm going to have to parlay. I'm going to have to not sign with you. So thank you for offering. I appreciate that. But I have to turn your deal down. And about two months later, maybe three months, uh, he dropped the whole R&B department which means my deal would have got lost in the shuffle as well. So he right. dropped Coco from SWV. He dropped, mm -hmm. um, what's his name from After Seven? Um, Kevin, uh, Kevin, come on, Ed Edmonds, yeah. Kevin and that, again, Edmonds. That, was a, that was a time where we saw people, people that were from very successful groups in the, in the late 80s and in the, late, in the 80s and 90s Yes. Going solo, Coco with her, Coco with, we had an amazing production from Rodney Jerkins. And we Thank had, you, uh, Sunshine. Yes, yeah, Sunshine, it was great. And great then, song. And then um, Kavon Edmonds with um, his single he had at the end exactly. of the Exactly, I love it. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so when we saw Lucy Pro, I was working in radio at the time, actually. I was working for a CHR Rhythmic Station, and I remember the label came to Albuquerque and was like, yo, Lucy Pearl's where it's at. You guys need to get into song. We played dance tonight in overnights because Albuquerque wasn't really urban. And they mm -hmm. felt, and, and the program director felt that dance tonight was an urban record. And you guys had a placement on that soundtrack. So yes, it yes. Was just like, Love and basketball. Love and absolutely. So when we saw that, wow, you had Tony, Tony, Tony. You had a Tribe Called Quest who was still kind of, they were doing their thing. Q-Tip had gone solo in 99 with his, with Amplified, his solo mm -hmm. album. But they still were in, the conversation of hip hop, of course. Exactly, the, a big was, part of hip hop. It was perfect, it was like, wow. And then so you guys dropped the album, but why was it a one-off though? Because that was the way that we structured it in the beginning. That's all they came to me for. Um, I think Raphael kind of, they, they weren't sure if it was gonna be successful at all. I thought it was brilliant genius from the beginning. I'm like, Raphael, you got something here. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know why they wanted to do a one-off. I'm not sure why he wanted that. That was that's the way it was presented to me from the very beginning. Yeah. So um, I was like, you know, to me, Bob Jameson, I told him, I said, I'm not sure why you don't see the big picture. Because again, this is not on your dime. Yeah. In other words, this keeps my name out there because I've, I've left in vogue and I've been gone almost a year at that time. Um, but it puts my name back out there to the public without you having to do that. You don't have to pay for this. This is Raphael's dime. This is his label, Pookie Records through Left Bank mm -hmm. or whatever the label was. Yeah, come on. This is in London. We were signed Pookie Records, EMI, Virgin. Yeah. But here in the states, it was something different. And um, oh my God, come on. Uh, I, it, it's not like it's going to eat up a lot of my time. And and in the interim, I can maybe record some stuff for my solo album. I, I think I'll be too busy, but right after the right after we're done, 
off the road. I get back in the studio and, and off the heels of the of the Lucy Pearl album, put out my own stuff. Like, don't you see that? And he was like, ah, Synergy. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. You know, record company people are shady. I know. <laughs> right? So you, it was a one off. It was a one off. Um, mm -hmm. What? So after Lucy Pro, do you still talk to Raphael and Ali? Like, what's the relationship no. like now? No? No, no, because Raphael was supposed to put out the album in June. Now, Raphael told me when I signed to him, he said, man, I don't have a lot of money to give you up front. There's no huge advance. That's what you typically get when you sign a major deal. Um, but, you know, I can give you a little bit of something. I think it was like $12,000 or something small. Not even. And, uh, no, it was fifteen. It was 15000 but, um, you know, whatever you need, I'll find it. I, I can get it for you. I can't give you a lot. Like, for me, I probably should have had about 50000 80000 at the time to sign to a major deal. Like, if I would have signed the, the RCA, RCA deal, they would have given me probably $100,000 to sign. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you don't have much, but that's okay. I saw the bigger picture with the project that we were doing. To me, right. yeah, it was bigger than the advance that he was trying to give or didn't have. Um, and okay, as long as you got my back, if I need you. And he's like, yeah. So by June, we were supposed to put the album out and the record was not released. July, August, September, October, November, the album is still not out. And I went to him and I said, Raphael, the bank is calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need help. You're my label. That's who you go to when you, you need an advance on money. You go to the label and you tell them I need uh, what they call a promissory note. Mm -hmm. And they give you a promissory, and you have to pay that back. But you you get a, you get what what you need. And Raphael's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Every man for himself. Like, wow. What? Whoa, wait, huh? Okay, so you told me that whatever I needed, you have my back. And now you're saying every man for himself. Like, first of all, I'm not a man. Uh, and second of all, you're supposed to have my back. Like, you're my boy. We've known each other. You were in my band when we were kids. I trusted you. And right. okay, all right. So that was pretty much it. And I was like, I'm not doing another deal. Yeah. I'm not signing with you again because I'm seeing how the fuck you are. And I ended up losing my house, lost wow. it completely. So there were just things I blame myself because I trusted him. How else was I supposed to do it, though? Like, to me, yeah. like I said from the beginning, it was, <sighs> Robbie as a dick. Come on, right. man. That's yeah. just Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Like, what does that sound like? And Bo, Dawn Robinson, like, it sounds yummy and delicious. That's what it sounds Doesn't like. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Lu Lucy Pearl, one off, you and Raphael, kind of you part ways, not on good terms. Mm -hmm. Years now, years later, we're 20 years now in 2021. We've had a 30 yes. year thirty year anniversary of Born to Sing. We've had and like a 20 said, year anniversary for Lucy uh, Pearl. Lucy Pearl, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we and In Vogue was just on New Year's Eve, oh, Dick Clark, uh, Rock and New Year's Eve. I heard, yeah, yeah. Do you, looking back on everything, Don, you've lived this incredible life. Yes, deep, deep, high, high lows, deep, high, high peaks, deep lows, right? Deep lows, yes, I deep know lows. what you meant. But um, do, are you at peace? Do you have any regrets? Oh. The only regret I have is that the girls didn't listen to me. I think that yeah. I had to listen to each other. If you can't trust the people that are working side by side with you, so... In any corporation, I don't care if it's a sanitization department, the garbage department, which is sanitization department, or uh, <clears throat> a hospital, or the government, um, you have a union that stands in and talks to the people and mm -hmm. stands up and says, okay, we need them to have better wages, lower taxes, we need them to have childcare on the job, we need them to have uh, whatever it is, um, you know, dental like i said healthcare, all that stuff and they speak for them and there was no one to speak for in vogue and i'm sad about that because i know that we were the best that ever did it at that time we were the gauge that everybody had any girl group that came out after us because we came out in the 90s hitting the ground running mm -hmm. so everybody else gauged their group after in vogue jade which yes. Cassandra Mills, by the way uh, created jade after us she said it she told me when she was managing me jade Brownstone, uh, Black, Black mm -hmm. Girl, uh, um, Good Girls. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else? TLC, of course. Destiny's Child, of course. Um, I said Brownstone. All the girl yeah. groups that came, you know what I mean? There's probably, you can name uh, 30 or 50 girl groups after us. 
if you don't have synergy and you don't talk within your group, I don't care what relationship you have, mother, son, father, daughter, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, husband, uh, wife, husband, it doesn't matter. If you don't have conversation and you don't have communication with each other, everything falls apart. Mm -hmm. One assumption after the other will tear you to shreds. And that's exactly yeah. what happened within Vogue. Instead of the girls coming to me and saying, what's up? I would have told them nothing's up. I've been in the studio with you guys every day. Have you not seen me in the studio, Terry? Maxine, have you not seen me, Cindy? Because I've been there every single day. So where's the hidden agenda that I have? <clears throat> I guess what they're saying is that I, the way that I understand Ter Cindy explaining it, that the record company thought that with my solo album not being under the uh, Atlantic Records moniker, that I could take my solo album and blow up bigger and never come back to Invoke. Right. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Which probably would have happened. No, it wouldn't have because I had a deal with them. I mean, no, meaning not that meaning that you would have blown that you would have been become a huge star from oh, your solo album. Oh, thank you though. so much. Yeah, but I, my loyalty was with the group. I love those girls. Yeah. Ah, do, I just got do, choked up, but I really, guys... I really loved them, and it was family. You know, you can see us having fun together. You see these little clips of us on the tour bus, and we created this shit ourselves like we did that you know denny and tommy produced the songs but we're the ones who got on the road and let the world know who the fuck we were yeah we we toured the world and lived out of suitcases and left our families and our parents behind and you know what i mean that yeah those experiences i only had with cindy terry maxine and me uh, me right. yeah so yeah. i only had those experiences with those three girls our right. manager was there, but he was only, yeah, David was out of the room. Leave us alone. We're ma doing our makeup and laughing. And we're in Japan for the first time. We're in London for the first time. We're in Germany, Spain. Those things only happened with us four. Yeah. Um, nobody else. My mom didn't share that with me. Cindy's mother, Terry's mother, nobody shared. Maxine's mom has been gone for since she was four years old. But her father, her sisters, nobody shared in those moments with us except us. Right. And I get sick about it. I really, it's hard. It's a hard, it's hard for me. I got to swallow it down because I really do want to cry about it. But it's, it's really hard because being blamed for something that could have easily been resolved and, and it just got out of hand. That's how usually if you, if you notice, even in your relationship with your husband, a, a lot of times the smallest little misunderstanding, if it's not dealt with and nipped in the bud right then. It festers. Oh my God, I thought you thought this. No, I thought you felt that. Oh my, I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's what usually happens. I've, I've been in many relationships with, I'm like, even my ex-husband, I'm like, okay, I thought you did. No, I was not. Oh, but you didn't. Right. If you just would have told me that, oh my God, we, we would have avoided this whole thing. What is the, well, now, now that we, there's 101 seven people watching, people are commenting. Done. Oh what my is, God! Wow. What is the biggest misconception you no, want to Rona clear up? No, Rona is not getting any love. Why is she not getting any love? <laughs> Rona is not getting any love because we're not talking about Rona. Rona wasn't there from day one. Thank you. I'm talking about. I can only talk about the parts that I was involved in. I'm not. Right. No shade right. to Rona. Whatever. What's the biggest <clears throat> misconception that you want to clear up about Don Robinson? What what have people gotten wrong about you all these years that you wanted that you that I say broke no? up the group that I was the one to destroy the whole thing that I was difficult? Yes, I was difficult, motherfuckers. I was difficult because two pennies a record should never be okay for yeah. anyone, right? Even in third world countries where they have child law, labor laws, and all that stuff, kids are getting paid more money than that. Like, come on, I was supposed to be okay with the fact that everybody else was buying mansions and Denny was like, oh, you know, it wasn't a $20, $20 million mansion. It was only 88,000, 8 million. Like that was okay. I was not okay with that ever. And I'm still not okay with that. So the misconception is that Dawn is a bitch. Yeah, I am. Dawn is difficult. Yeah, I really am. Dawn is a problem. I am because I am a whistleblower. Yes. But I was a whistleblower. I was a problem. I was a bitch. I was all those things because I was tired of not getting paid period period I think, yes period. i don't think any adult working a nine to five would be okay with not getting paid in their job just just go home after a full day's of worth of work and at the end of your two weeks where's the check well done i'm not here's gonna get paid it's okay it's okay that i don't get paid 
It's not. And here's the thing. You stood up for yourself in a way that we are now empowering people to stand up for themselves in 2021. Yes. 30, 20 some years ago. So, so, and it's, it's sad that you, that you, your career had to have be derailed and be, and have been postponed in so many different ways because you were standing in your truth, much like the way we are screaming from the rooftops for people to do, you know, you know, so, so I, I, we celebrate you, we celebrate you for that. And I love you, Jason. Thank you so much for that. Really? Yeah. It's really okay because, and thank you. I've been saying this, there's clips of me even saying it. There was a show that we did in London. It wasn't the top of the pops because you don't sit on a couch. Mm-hmm. But it was some, yeah, they're really fun over there. So the show that we did, we were sitting on the couch and we had on our jackets from Free Your Mind. Well, we did um, our Free Your Mind performance from Saturday Night Live. I had a, a green one on, Terry had a red one on with black sleeves, Cindy had all black, and Maxine had, we had, there were multiple colors. And we were sitting on the couch in those jackets and the 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 um the, the host of the show said so don't um so loose girls ladies or something like that um would you ever date a black uh, uh date a guy a bloke uh that had no money that was broke and had no money and i said well we're we're broke too that was not, you know that was on free your mind album like i've been saying this for a very long time and after sure. a while i was like because they would always like dawn you shouldn't have said that cindy would say that to me or terry would say it. i'm like <laughs> Why do we have to always lie? You guys always want to lie and make a perception of something that is not there. Real, right. Act like we're rich, but we're really not, and be okay with that. <laughs> My mansion. I live in this man. It's like we have to lie about the stuff that we are really going through, and I don't like that. And it's not to sit here and say, oh, my God, we got to tell our woes and that we're not making money and that we're not. I'm not trying to play the violin as they say you know oh poor dawn you know she didn't make any money and poor thing and th- that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying everyone else around us was so rich jason yeah. because of us sure but right. we were not so you know why why can't we speak up why can't we say what's real why can't we fight for what's right for us and what we deserve for, you know? it's so hard because i love the girls in my group. I love Cindy, Terry, Maxine. I look at our clips. I li- I can't watch them because I cry every single time. I laugh. Yeah. I cry. I'm sitting there watching that that um that that interview. Like you said, um, what is it called? Uh, private sessions. Sessions. Exactly. I I cry because I'm like, I know that I wanted to say more stuff, and that because Cindy, you can hear me at the end when Cindy said and Sylvia thought this and and I was like, no, she didn't think this about me, and then. The host of the show said, Dawn, I think Dawn is trying to say something else. And I was, but I didn't want to step on Terry. So I didn't get to say, no, it wasn't because of me, but Terry did a solo album too. I didn't get all that in back then. And I was too afraid to say it, really. So well, now I'm, I'm getting my truth out. What'd you say? Yeah. No, I was going to say, I'm elated that you have been able to talk to as many people as you have. And people are so receptive. And they're, 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 you're finally, it's got to be healing for you to be able it to is finally so... be like, Yes, it's cathartic, Jason. Yeah. It really is. It's like you've been held back. Uh, every single manager that I had, including Cassandra, and they were, you know, this this is what they knew to be true in the industry back then. Mm-hmm. Save your story until you have a book or your album is out, and then you have the the platforms to be able to talk. Um, and at that time, it was like, don't, they weren't thinking, um, get a publicist. Because I remember seeing an interview with, um, what's her name? Oh my God, Halle Berry. And she was gorgeous. She was sitting in the interview and she was saying, um, you know, the, big, the biggest investment that I ever made for myself in the very beginning of my career was to get a publicist. She said, my very first check, I just went out. My manager said, get a publicist, pay for a publicist um, because they will blow you up to the world. Yeah. And she didn't say that verbatim, but she said, you know, everybody will know who you are based on what your publicist puts out there. And I was like, I don't have the money to get a publicist. <laughs> They're so expensive. now, now because of your platform and everybody else who came before you, I want to thank you. Yes. Mwah. So, so much because other people are like, well, my platform isn't very big and I only have 10 followers or 100 followers. And I'm like, your platform with two people on it is huge. The fact that you want to talk to me and it's been all these years that I've been quiet. Everybody yeah. thought that I just left the group. I didn't just leave the group. I was pushed I out. And we knew that. We, Don. You Don, did? We, 
Yeah, well, and we, because listen, listen, especially when you're, when you're a, a, a pop cult, when you're, I'm a music head. I've, I mean, I, like I said, I grew up listening to, I remember getting Funky Divas on cassette and listening and, and hearing you guys go <laughs> up to yesterday and give it up, turn it loose. And wow. just, so, so I have been a fan. And so I, I, and then EB3, I was like, this is weird, but you, <laughs> you, men you mentioned, you mentioned a book, a memoir, yes. your autobiography, Ta Breaking Dawn is coming in 2022. What, the break what's up of with dawn. that? The Break, break of Dawn, sorry, The Break mm -hmm. of Dawn. That's all right. That, we're, that's gonna go more But you depth. know what, Jason? Mm. Hmm. Breaking Dawn is a better title. I really, I, that is a, because the way that I describe Break of Dawn is that I'm breaking away from my past and the dawn is a new start, a new day, a new beginning sure. for me, right? So yeah, Breaking right. Dawn, does that sound too negative? No, because Breaking Dawn, look, Mariah Carey's oh, memoir no. just came came out, and she has part. She has one called "Broken Down," and Mariah Carey has a song called "Breakdown." So, yes. like "Breaking Dawn" means like they tried to break you, and then here in the story in an autobiography, you tell us how you put yourself back together again. Oh, look, we just workshopped your memoir, dog. Yes, exactly. We your <laughs> memoir. I love it. I love oh my it. god! Oh my god! Let's that say, might be let, good. That might be take good. Some, Let's take some of questions from 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 the fans down here. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody here. said they stopped listening after after I was gone. Thank you so much, CRC. Um, uh, let's see this one right here. They asked. Oh, nice. if, How are you? If asked to forgive, will you come back to Lucy Pearl or In Vogue? So, would you ever go back and be? Because I know there was reunion talk with In Vogue. You guys made, did a couple performances. Mm -hmm. Would. Would you would you record with In Vogue again? If, if the, I if always the... forgave them. It wasn't about forgiveness. To me right now, like last year, we did a show for Cancer Society with Sylvia Rome. Yeah. And she asked us all to come back. Um, my thing is the way that I'm treated when I'm in the group. Sure. Cindy and Terry act like they own the whole thing and they have a say so in what everything that happens. Instead, they make it seem like it's their shit, as if Maxine and I did not help create and build that whole thing. Rona wasn't there from the beginning to build this, the foundation of what In Vogue is today. She has benefited from what we mm -hmm. built, but she is not, you know what I mean? So um, I asked if we could bring in someone, Maxine and I can have someone come in and film um, so that we can document the whole reunion. And their manager said, yeah, of course. And then the next day he called me and said, uh, Dawn, well, the girls don't want you to have somebody recording right away. I said, well, I understand. So what if I have what if I have somebody come in? If, what if I have him come in the day of the actual performance? And um, he could just film us, just me and Maxine, only us, so we can document this thing. And he said, "Okay, I'll let you know." And I'm still waiting. Okay. He never gave Nothing. me an answer. So uh, meanwhile, Rona is backstage with us, filming everything, taking pictures, filming, doing all kinds of stuff. And after a while, Maxine was like, "Rona, hold on, I'm sorry, these uh, words are across my face," but she said, um. Rona, um, stop taking pictures. Just like that, I was like, <laughs> we were all like, oh my God, Maxine called her out. She sure did. And Rona was like, what? I'm not going to put it on social media, Maxine. And Max was like, I don't care. We asked if we could have somebody in and Dawn asked if somebody could come in and film this for us and document stuff for us. And we have no one. We have not been able to from day one because we had three days of rehearsal. Day one, and now today's the day of the show, and we have nobody to, to document this for us. So, no, you can't take pictures. I don't care if you don't put them on social media today. You still have it documented so you can put it on social media tomorrow. But we don't have anybody to do that for us. So, no, right. you can't, you know. And I was like, oh, my God, Maxine was right. She was absolutely right. So, yeah, it's really hard for me to be... <sighs> Part of a group that is never fair. Yeah. They're so full of shit. All of them, <laughs> I love them, but they're full of shit. They've always treated me differently. Like I said, me doing a solo album and Terry doing a solo album was not different at all. Right. It was no different. Then, all right, fair enough. And it's hard to enough. forgive Raphael when I lost my freaking house. Who would do that? Would you forgive someone when they no. knew that it was possible? Exactly. What the fuck? Like I should no. have been postal, you know? No. And I'm not and a violent, I'm not a violent person, credit, Jason. But everything. I, I feel that. I feel that. Like you, you look. You have been justified in every way you feel. Um, Thank I have you. a question. I have a question for you, and this is one yeah. I always wanted to ask because uh, you guys have hits on hits on hits. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite invoke? So, what's your favorite song? What is that one song that you're like? 
that when you that when you recorded it, when you performed it, or that when you think about the whole discography of the group, that you're like, wow, this is so meaningful to me. That would, or is is there a song that gets you that that gets There's you in two your heart songs? Right? Okay, waiting on you because that was the very first song we did at the audition, and they put my actual audition on board to sing. Okay, I'm proud of that. And then don't let go because that's the biggest song we've had. That's when they kicked me out of the group, and that showed my fucking worth. Yeah. That showed my work. You guys kicked me out on the biggest song. That was like the, if you were going to kick me out at all, that was the wrong time to do it. That was not smart at all. So I outsmarted everybody. Like, okay, good luck with that, guys. Good luck. Because it made no sense. And those are great songs, too. They're really great songs. I love Waiting on You. And I love um, Don't Let Go. And even though it wasn't our producers that produced Don't Let Go, it's still a great song. When the it's piano starts, record. yes, mm -hmm. the piano and then the guitar comes in. It's just epic. It's so epic to me. Chris from Dublin um, asks, who are you listening to today? Who, what, who's influencing you, your sound now? Old school. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I love Billie Eilish. I think some of the stuff she does is cool. I love um, SZA. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's dope as hell. I love her, um, the, the, the artist her. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm still in Prince world. I'm still in Rufus Shaka Khan. I go back to Hollywood album. I go back to, um, Crosby, Stills and Nash. I play a lot of Led Zeppelin. I go back old school. I can't even, I can't tell you that I, I buy the new artists that are out today. And the, 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 hey, listen, also nostalgia feels really good right now, right? It feels, you, it you I, I have a playlist that has nothing but 90s R&B. I listen to that more than I listen to anything new. Exactly. Um, because it, it just feels good. Yeah. Don, it has been so Wait, awesome so, wait, to... a couple more questions. Wait, 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 from Jason. Oh, uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Hold on, let's see, let's, let's, um, let's go, um, ooh, do you plan on doing any future projects with the incomparable Joyce Irby? Woman, uh, Joyce Irby. So Joyce is a good friend of mine. I love her beyond words, beyond yeah. them. Um, she calls me at least once a week just to see how I'm doing. She really does. You know, she'll text me, hey, I can't call you because I've been busy lately, but I, I want you to be okay. And she's just like a motherly, uh, just, just something warm and loving about her. And um, uh -huh. we've been considering doing work together because she writes great pop songs. She's really, really cool when it comes to pop music. So yeah. I would love to. She did a song called Dancing Alone or Dancing by Myself earlier last year. Um, and I was supporting her on that because it's so cool pop. It's like, yeah, the, 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 um, the Go-Go's could have done that song. It's really cute. Yeah. yeah. Triple, Triple Over Radio Show asks, what's, in, what's more important to you now, being friends with them or working together? Working together. B making friends doesn't make me any money. I got friends. Yeah. Come on, Jason. Like, seriously, I have the friends that I need, and they would never kick me out the way that the girls did. My best friend would never do to me what those girls did to me. So my thing is we were in business together, and everybody forgets that. They think that we should be sisters. We should be, you know, and, and, but your sisters, if your sisters do that to you, then they're not really family. And I've mm -hmm. had people that are actually more family than my blood sisters sometimes. So. Preach. I, 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 we started out as a group together. We became sisters in the interim, but there was business to be done, and that business was not done. Right. And then you guys are going to kick me out and make the world think that I was the problem. Like, Dawn is the difficult one. <laughs> Come on, tell why. If you're going to say that I'm difficult, I, I wear that like a badge of honor, but tell them why I'm being difficult. Dawn was pissed the fuck off because she was making two pennies a record. Tell the truth. Yeah. Instagram, Instagram saying they're gonna kick me off in, in five minutes. We, we, we did another this. hour. Oh my god! We did. Are you doing an in-person book tour? Yes, I am, Leon. We need um, that book. We, yes! listen, you're, gonna, you're gonna come back on, and we're gonna when you have the book. By then, when the book comes out, I'm gonna have my own national television show on TV. So I'll have you on television. Oh and my talk goodness! About it. I would love that, to, Jason. And and <clears throat> thank you so much for giving of your time and telling your story. And and I. I never in a million years would thought that this is how I would be connecting with someone who I've listened to I'm for my you. whole life. So exactly. Thank you. Well, you wanted it somewhere in your universe. You said it. You put it out there in your mind, and now you have an fruition. And that's how the law of attraction works. Yep. That agreed, is how it agreed. works. Yes. When you speak it, it's real. Yep. All the best to you, Don Robinson, living legend, 
Living Thank legend. you so much. Thank you for having me in my blue lipstick today. <laughs> hey, we're, we're here for it. And everyone below, the, both interviews are going to be posted on my Instagram page as well as on YouTube. So if you missed it, you can go back and relive the splendor of Miss Don Robinson. And Don, all the best. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Jason. Wait a minute. One more thing. I want to plug my... Um, well, I talked about my book. Yeah. But I want to plug my... Um, that I just got the funding for my album. But that... Yeah, so I did. <laughs> I did. I got it. Finally. Exactly. I'm, I'm really okay. happy. Well, so then what we're going to do is we're going to do a Jason Unleashed listening party with Don when the album drops. Exactly, yes. But in the meantime, I still need help. So I'm like, I put, they were like, uh, Maxine shamed me about putting my cash app. I have my cash app information on my uh, Instagram page, Stiletto. It's called Stiletto. So it's on there. Yes. Uh, because, get, get... well, the, a bunch of fans were like, Don, you need to do that because they want to help me right now in the interim before I start recording my album. And they said, um, the, what is it, Vanessa Bell Armstrong has hers on her page. Uh, the Clark sisters have theirs on their pages. Um, some other people, as well. I was like, other celebrities are doing that? They're like, yeah, so I do it too. So and, yes, and ain't nothing wrong with that. I we, cannot we wait to do your show, Jason. Seriously. Thank you. Thank You're you. wonderful. You're love you. you. Love you back. You are incredible as well. Take care, stay safe, and we'll talk soon. All right, we will. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.